Welcome to another S&P 500 analysis. Today is March 19, 2022. The market rally sharply after the Fed raised the interest rate by the highly anticipated quarter of a percent. Is this a bear market rally or is this a beginning of a new uptrend? In this video, we will look at the market internals, the sentiment, and the price action of the indexes and see what they are telling us. In addition, we will analyze the 10-year yield, oil, gold, the ETF for the S&P 500, the NASDAQ 100, and the Russell 2000. And in my summary, I will give you my macro view on what I expect will likely happen. Stay tuned. Now, before I begin, I need you to take a moment and click that thumbs up to help me promote this video on YouTube. The Fed finally announced the highly publicized and highly anticipated interest rate hike of 25 basis points or quarter of a percent this week. What's next is the market will start pricing in what the Fed needs to do, not what the Fed might do. Before this 25 basis point hike, the market was pricing in for a possible 50 basis point to start slowing down the inflation. Then the Russia-Ukraine war broke out, and the Fed used this as an excuse to do only 25 basis points and continue to hope inflation will come down by itself just by believing the supply chain issue will get resolved soon and that it will bring down inflation. This is wishful thinking, just like you're stuck with the stupid transitory phrase on inflation earlier. Well, guess what? Based on the current macro picture, that is not going to happen. And I will talk more about the macro view in my summary. But now let's take a look at what the S&P 500 has done so far and then see what the market sentiment and the market internal are telling us. Now looking at this weekly chart of the S&P 500, it has reversed back up to a one-time framing up price pattern. The range last week was 303 points, almost 304 points. It gained 259 points or 6.16% for the week. It is still below this multi-year price channel but the price did close above this declining 10-week moving average, but underneath this 40-week moving average. We are still seeing a uh, lower low and lower high. So until this uh, reverse back up above this level here, to reverse it back to a higher high, the weekly trend is still considered to be down. Next, we'll look at this sentiment chart. Now, for those that are unfamiliar with these market-generated information that I'm about to review with you, then go watch my video on seven key market indicators where I have explained what each one of these indicators represent. I have posted a link in the description below. Also, as far as I know, this is the only channel on YouTube that reviewed the genuine market-generated internals and the sentiment not those that have been derived or distorted by some mathematical equation. So if you are serious on monitoring what the market is telling you and to get an unbiased view on the market, then click the subscribe to subscribe to this channel. On this daily chart of the S&P 500, we see it went up four consecutive days and doing one time framing up and broken out from this declining trend line here. We'll talk more about the S&P 500 price action later on. For now, let's just take a look at the VIX. You see the VIX here came down from this above the uh, 30 level and back into this 2030 zone. It closed the week at 23.87. So that implied the market participants are still being fearful and taking some caution in the marketplace. And also looking at the put call ratio, it finally came down and dipped below this 0.75 on Friday. Throughout the week, it was above the 0.75 and it closed the week at 0.65. So apparently some market participants are putting on some risk. So we are seeing some contradiction between the VIX and the put call ratio. So it will be interesting to watch how these two sentiment indicators resolve the differences in the coming week. Now looking at the New York Stock Exchange internal, the up-down volume ratio was at 5.3 to 1 in favor of the up volume on Wednesday. Other than that, the other three days, which were up more than 1% or more, 
was only between 2 and 3 to 1 in favor of the up volume. Although the up down volume ratio was positive on all four updates, it doesn't seem to show strong buying other than on Wednesday. And on the daily advance decline, only Wednesday and Thursday show the advancing issue of dominating the decliner. The other two days, we did not see one side of the market where almost 80% of the trader stock are advancing. On the new high, new low, we saw a huge spike up in the number of stock make new 52 week low on Monday. There were 729 stock make new low. And on Tuesday, 392 stock make new low while the S&P 500 gained more than 2% or up 89 points. And on Wednesday, the S&P 500 gained 95 points or 2.24% and there were 174 stock make new 52 week low and only 44 stock make new 52 week high. Thursday and Friday, the S&P 500 gained 1.21 and 1.14% respectively. 67 new low on Thursday and 58 new low on Friday. What is interesting is all these days with more than 1% gain, there were more new low than new high except on Friday, the number of new high etched out the number of new low by a single stock. And on the New York Stock Exchange cumulative AD line, we see the negative divergence. This negative divergence here still have not been resolved as it reverses back up. So the expectation is to see the S&P 500 come down to these recent low and resolve the negative divergence. Now let's take a look at the Nasdaq market internal. But before we do that, let's do a fast recap what the Nasdaq 100 did last week. On Monday, it was down 1.9%, a loss of 255 points. On Tuesday, it was up 3.16%, or 412 points. And on Wednesday, it was up 3.7%, gain of 498 points. And on Thursday, it gained 162 points, up 1.16%. And Friday, was up 2%, and gain 301 point. Now looking at the up-down volume ratio, we saw a strong buying on Wednesday. The up-down volume ratio was 7.96 to 1, almost 8 to 1 in favor of volume. The other three updates was only between 3 and 5 to 1 in favor of the up volume. The daily advance decline was a bit more respectable. It showed broad advance on Wednesday and Thursday. Modest in favor of the advancing issue on Tuesday and Friday. And for the NASDAQ market, on Monday, the new low was 930, with only 36 stock make new 52 week high. Although the number of stock make new 52 week low came down in the latter part of the week here, but the number of new lows still outnumber the new high throughout the week, while the NASDAQ 100 made a humongous gain. And for the cumulative advanced decline line in the NASDAQ market, we did not see any divergence between the NASDAQ 100 and the uh, cumulative advanced decline. So from the sentiment, market participants are still being fearful, but there is also some risk on. So it is a bit of mixed message. With four consecutive updates of more than 1% from each day, the up-down volume ratio is still not showing strong buying and only modest level of broad market participation in the advance as shown by the daily advance decline. In addition, new lows still outnumber new high. So the gain from the S&P 500 and the Nasdaq 100 look impressive, but the internal are not so impressive. And this implies stay cautious. Now let's take a look at the S&P 500 daily chart here. As you can see, I have reset a new Fibonacci retracement using this swing because the previous swing, this uh, point here, the price went up above the 382. So it's uh, invalidate that retracement zone. So right now we're essentially looking at this new uh, Fibonacci retracement. And here's the retracement zone. And uh, as of Friday, it's bumping up against this reach, uh, this 50% retracement level. So for the coming week, I'll be uh, watching to see what it come up. 
do this 382 somewhere around 4550 or near this 4545 this pivot high here and see what it encounter resistance and get a rejection and put it back or it could be uh, just get a rejection from the 50% retracement and start coming back down so the uh, point of uh, uh, interest would be somewhere around this 4300 level and once it breaks to this 4300 level then I'll be watching for this 4114 this low here the uh, February low and see if it break that and then start coming back down to these retracement level I mean this extension level here the first one would be 3923 at 127 so that would be um, you know in confluence with these uh, uh, consolidation here this balance area here so we'll be uh, watching for that you notice that it did uh, break the uh, trend line this uh, declining trend line here last week and also one would uh, say that it is trying to form a higher low and a higher high so we'll see because if it uh, come back down and retest this low then uh, this entire uh, formation will be uh, uh, will be void and looking at the Nasdaq 100 daily chart again I also did the same thing here as I did for the uh, S&P 500 I moved the uh, swing uh, here for the uh, Fibonacci retracement and this is the retracement zone as you can see on Friday it is bumping up against this 618 so if you come in and get above that 168 I mean 618 then we're basically looking at the 50% uh, retracement and that would be somewhere around 14,886, uh, somewhere around there. So we'll see what uh, come up to this retracement zone and work itself up either toward the 50% uh, or the 382, which will be somewhere around uh, 15,254. And that would be in confluence with this uh, level of this uh, little bit of a zone here of uh, 15,345. So that would be some of the uh, possible uh, upside scenario and then on the downside is basically get rejected from the 618 and come down and retest these low down here which would be somewhere around 13,065 area so essentially uh, 13,000 and once it break that then we're looking for this thing to come down to these extension level at 127 at 12,102 and that is also in confluence with these support resistance this uh, little zone here now let me go back to the uh, S&P 500 just to point out that this level here on Friday's close we essentially are only down 7.35 percent from the high here for the S&P 500 and for the Nasdaq uh, 100 it is uh, you know 13.94 percent or close to 14 percent you know, as of Friday's close compared to this high here essentially the all-time high so it is still in the correction territory for the Nasdaq 100 uh, while the S&P 500 could classify it as in a pullback mode because it is still less than 10 percent decline now looking at the Russell 2000 we see that it sort of creep above this uh, trend line here on Friday and it is coming up on this uh, uh, 2075 level so right now we see would it be able to work back up above this uh, 2134 essentially to get back into this uh, balance area here right if it could then we'd be uh, watching for it to uh, possibly work itself back up to the uh, uh, 2318 area 2310 uh, that region there but right now we are essentially watching to see what this thing stay in balance and break out of this balance to come up to this balance area or would it be uh, rejected and work itself back down to the other end of this balance area near this 1935 and if break this 1935 we're still looking for this replacement here you know basically the uh, symmetry uh, retracement or this you know you could call this as a bear flag or you know so essentially looking at this 1700 area now looking at the Russell 2000 uh, you know the uh, pullback here essentially it is 15% below this high here 
So just like the Nasdaq 100, it is in a correction. And looking at the Dow Jones Transportation, as you can see, it had a very strong week last week for the Dow Jones Transportation. And again, also uh, reset the uh, Fibonacci uh, retracement. So right now it is uh, coming up to this 38.2 retracement zone, this level here at 16,675. We'll see if it would come up here and get rejected and push back down to the 618. And that would be uh, in confluence with this zone here that I have marked off and somewhere around this 15,704. So if it uh, get rejected and break below the 618, then we'll look for the transportation to continue to move down for this low here. And as you can see, it did make a uh, heck of a progress that went from uh, basically, I believe it was in the uh, bear market here. Let me just check. Uh, yeah, it's 22%. Uh, it right? was down 22% from its high to right now. It's only, uh, what was that, on Friday, somewhere around 10%. Less than 10%, right? At 9.69%. So it went from a bear market to a pullback because it's less than 10%. When we have 10% or more, then it will be a correction. And when we get to 20% or more and a decline, then we are in a bear market. So right now, it went from 22% down from the high to only 9.5% or so from its high. So that's a remarkable recovery from the uh, Dow Jones Transportation. And guess what? The Dow Jones Transportation moving this entire move under the premises of the oil going above that $130 uh, you know, or so. I believe it was the highest $130. we will take a look at it later on on the, uh, the oil and see exactly what was the high. So out of all this, basically we're looking for this to see what it come up to the 16,675 on the upside. And then on the downside, it's coming back down to this low here at 14,133. If we break that, then we're actually looking for these extension. The first one is 127 at 13,000 level. And here's the Dow Jones Industrial. We see that Dow Jones Industrial is also trying to break out of this trend line here. And again, I have essentially reset the Fibonacci retracement to use that swing, the swing here. And right now the retracement zone is in this uh, area here. So the price is basically coming up this uh, above the 50% uh, retracement. We'll keep an eye on it next week to see what it continue to push up and get up to this level here at this uh, you know, 35,150 area and see what it get a rejection and pushes back down. And if it does come down, then we're basically watching for this uh, 618 here at 34,000 level. And if break this 34,000 level, then we're looking for this low here to get tested, the 32,273 essentially coming down to this 32,000 level. And once it break, then we'll be uh, looking at this extension at this 31,000 area. And this would be somewhere in confluence with uh, these price area here. And looking at the New York Stock Exchange Composite Index here, we see that it uh, came back in to this balance area. So right now, we're basically watching to see would it be able to come up to this uh, 16,708 and actually break out of this balance and work itself back up to this uh, 16,932. And essentially, we'll take out this uh, declining trend line here. And on the uh, downside, if it is unable to uh, break out of this uh, balance zone, then we we'll expect uh, this thing to retrace back down to 16,000 area here, and then see what it uh, work itself back down to this 15,775 area. Now, looking at this uh, New York Stock Exchange Composite Index. Notice that it's only less than 5% from its all-time high here on this decline. That is remarkable, right? And this is a broad market index. This is all the stock traded in the New York Stock Exchange. On this 10-year yield, we see that it went up to uh, close to 2.25% here last week before it closed back down a little bit and closed the week at uh, somewhere around 2.15%. 
Now we are still expecting this to come up to somewhere around two and a half percent level, and that is based on this cup and handle pattern projected move up to the six one eight, or this cup and handle pattern and projected up to one hundred percent at this level here, somewhere around two point four percent. So we're essentially targeting this ten year yield somewhere around. Two and a half percent, and here we notice the dollar came down to this ninety-seven seventy-nine area and sort of uh, you know bouncing around and get a little rejection here. So essentially, it is kind of trapped between these uh, level here, the ninety-seven seventy-nine and ninety-eight eighty. So we'll see how long will this chop around in the zone before it decides to come down to this uh, possibly to this trend line near this uh, 96 and a half or so or would it uh, come back up to above the uh, 9880 and then pushes up to this 101 area and here's crude oil this is a weekly chart as you can see it came up almost to this 130 level here 13050 so uh, right now it's uh, pulling back and uh, keep an eye on this level here somewhere around this 9092 area we could see a little bit more of a uh, you know bounce here and here's that trend line we could come down to this trend line but that would be below 80. i don't foresee oil will be down at this uh, level um uh, in the uh, you know in the near future so but again you know anything is possible but right now i'm basically looking at this 92 area to see what to be able to find some sort of support and get a bounce back up and to take out this high here I expect this uh, might not be the high for this cycle. And silver also pulled back last week after a uh, run up to this uh, 2750 uh, area here. So right now it is uh, trying to retest this 2470 zone. So we'll see what it be able to continue to see get a bounce back up to this 2667. But if we break below this 2470, then uh, going to be watching for a possible retracement back down to this 2272 area but right now I'm basically a little bit of a bias on the upside so I'll be uh, watching to see if we'll get it uh, bounce and then take out this high this high is get taken out then there's a good chance that it could uh, come back up and retest this uh, 2667 and gold got above the 2000 mark here the uh, last uh, week or so and the high was 2078.80 and now it uh, came back down and dipped below this 1923 remember that was uh, one of our target when it was down here so but it is getting a little bit of a bounce here so we'll see would it be able to hold this uh, 1923 and get another bounce back up for the uh, 2000 mark or will it uh, break this low here and if it break this then we're essentially looking for this thing to come back down to this 1846 area. So we'll see how this thing will hold up in the coming, in the coming week. Will we get a bounce back up or will it uh, start coming back down to this level here? Now let's take a look at the ETF there for the S&P 500, the SPY. Remember uh, last week, this point of control was up here at this uh, 450 level close to that 450 level so we see a uh, shift down on the point of control this week as the price make a upward move so that is a little bit of a uh, decrease in value with price moving up something to pay attention to so right now we're essentially looking at this 445.41 this is one of the uh, virgin point of control from a weekly profile so that could pose as a uh, potential uh, resistance here and if we do see it uh, get rejected, then we're essentially looking for this thing to move back down to this uh, 439.27 and essentially test this point of control. And if it fails this point of control, then we'll come back down and look for this 432 to get tested. It also is a uh, 1D high volume no and see if we'll get a bounce back up. And if it doesn't, then we're essentially looking for this thing to come down for this uh, 415 area and eventually come down and test this low. Okay, so that's basically what we are looking at 
or a little bit of a intermediate term type of a, a scenario. And for the QQQ, the ETF for the NASDAQ 100, we're essentially looking at these zones here. Right up here, there's a, uh, you know, a little bit of a, a high volume zone between 357 and uh, 359.50. So that would be uh, one of the area to keep an eye on for the uh, upside potential. There could be a little bit of a resistance here at 352.55. So we might see a little bit of a chop here if it come up, uh, you know, a little chop. And if we could break through, then we're essentially looking for this 360 area. So that would be the upside scenario. And if it could break this 360, then this value area high, somewhere around 365, would be in play. Now, this is a little bit more on the intermediate uh, term. Than, uh, than near term, but you never know. The market could, uh, you know, move pretty quickly as it could, uh, you know, as it demonstrated from last week, right? So anything is possible. And uh, on the downside, we're essentially looking for this thing to come back down and uh, test this uh, point of control here, this composite point of control of 343, to see would it be able to uh, get a bounce back up. And if it doesn't, then we're essentially looking for this thing to move down toward this, uh, you know, value area low, somewhere around this uh, 326. And for the Russell 2000, you can see that it broke this downward trend line here, and it popped up into this area here, somewhere around 207. So if it continue to move up, uh, this is uh, one of the uh, low volume, uh, no here, low volume zone somewhere near this 210. So that would be the level to keep an eye on next if it uh, continues to move up is this uh, 210. Now, if it uh, come back down and uh, you know dip below this 204, then look for this composite point of control somewhere around this uh, 199 area and see would it get a, a little bit of a bounce here. But if it uh, break through and get below this 199, and look for this 191, 192, essentially this value area low to get tired. Now, let me give you my two cents on the macro picture that I'm envisioning. But before I do that, let me tell you that the recent rally as I see it is a bear market rally. Officially, we cannot even call it that because the market has not been in a bear market yet. So more correctly, this is a dead cat bounce or an oversold rally. Definitely, it is not a new uptrend. We have not seen capitulation and the recent selling have been orderly. This could be a bull trap. Who am I to say, right? I could be totally wrong, just like anybody else could. No one knows exactly what the market will do, but time will tell. Now to the macro. Inflation is at 7.9% 40-year high, and it will likely reach 10% before it peaks. The Fed decide to raise the interest rate by only 25 basis points with a vote of 8 to 1. The St. Louis Fed President Bowler descended in favor of raising 0.5%. During the press conference, Jay Powell was repeatedly asked about what if the Fed is wrong about when inflation will be peak and if inflation continue to rise. He repeatedly answered with this no answer nonsense that the Fed had the necessary tools to get inflation under control. But it did not reveal what are those tools and how is the Fed going to use them. This is just BS talk. This is like when he was asked during the last testimony in Congress by one of the congressmen. And the question was, will he be a Paul Volcker to get inflation under control? And Jay Powell answered saying, Volcker will go down in history as one of the good men. <laughs> and the congressman emphasized to him that will he, Jay Powell, do what Volcker did to bring inflation under control. And Jay Powell repeated the same line. The Fed have the necessary tool to get inflation under control. Well, the point is not that the Fed doesn't have the tools, but will you, as a chairman of the Fed, use those two to bring inflation under control. For those that do not know what Volcker did, he raised interest rate to a level that is needed to get inflation under control and brought the U.S. economy to a recession. Volcker knew it would cause a recession, 
but he felt it is more important to, to get inflation under control. So the question is, do you believe Jay Powell have the guts to do what Volcker did to get inflation under control? Did the Fed will likely be forced to hike interest rate in between FOMC meeting between now until the end of the year? And it will be forced to make 50 or even 75 basis point hike in an attempt to get in front of the curve. Of course, the pressure that forced the Fed to act this way is not because they have been wrong on inflation, but also due to the midterm election with runaway inflation. The Fed have been wrong and will continue to be wrong on inflation. They will be shown that inflation did not peak this year. And what they counted on the supply chain to get resolved will not happen in just a few months. Instead, it will take a year or two, just like the hope that inflation was transitory. If we want a supply chain issue to get resolved quickly, then bring on a recession. Nothing solved a supply issue quicker than a destruction of demand. So watch the market to start price in a slow economy with rising inflation. That's an environment for stagnation. Until the Fed start being more aggressive on controlling inflation, the market view that the Fed is not taking an aggressive stand to control inflation. And eventually, this dovish move will cause the Fed to really step on the accelerator and throw the economy into a deep recession. Now, the Fed and many other things, this inflation is entirely due to disruption of the supply chain due to the pandemic. Whether it is totally true or not, the current supply chain problem will not get resolved in the coming months. It will likely to persist for a year or two. But the more important thing that many overlook or ignore is the amount of money the government gave out in the stimulus package. This has fueled the increase in demand at a time of limited supply due to the disruption from the pandemic. And furthermore, the free money the government is handing out has made it more beneficial for many low-wage earners to stay out of the workforce and just get the free money from the government because it is much more than they would normally earn. The side effect of this is it caused many businesses to increase the wage in attempt to get these workers to come back to work and to keep existing employees from quitting. And this is the part of the inflation that is not transitory or supply chain related. Wage inflation is permanent. The only way to remedy this is with a recession. A recession does two things. It reduces income due to layoff and people are willing to take lower wage just to have a job. And it will reduce the amount of discretionary income and that will destroy demands. So in my mind, one should prepare for the possibility of a recession and a destruction of demand. And when this recession is over, the supply chain issue will be resolved and we will have a reset and a wait for the Fed to pop up another asset bubble to continue the quest to destroy livelihood with the boom and bust monetary policy. And that is my two cents. What are your thoughts? Share them in the comment section below. Now, if you like the content in this video, be sure to smash that thumbs up to give it a like and help promote this video. Thank you for watching and stay safe.